Hey guys, Chris here. So I wanted to go over another helpful video here. So at this point in time, you've gotten to the point where you are running out of storage. So what do you do? Obviously, you're going to need to go and buy more drives. So depending on your current situation, if you're using a NAS, if you're using an external drive server with a bunch of drives in it, really your options are somewhat limited depending on how much uh, drive bays that you have that you can add for additional drives. So you're looking at either upgrading a drive or you're looking at adding more drives. Well, a couple ways you can do this. You can go ahead and use a Western Digital Red Drive like this drive here, which is a 4 terabyte drive that I just recently upgraded from my uh, Unraid server. Went from a 4 terabyte to an 8 terabyte, so I can get a little bit more storage. I will be doing another video of that shortly as well. Do keep in, in tune for that. So, what do you do? Well, you look at either buying another drive or you look at upgrading a drive. Uh, depending on your needs and depending on how much storage you need and your budget, Everything that I'm seeing, the 8 to 10 terabyte range seems to kind of be the sweet spot right now for, um, of course, depending on your country, but uh, regarding the USD for the United States, the 8 to 10 terabyte range is really about the sweet spot for drive space per cost. Right now, an 8 terabyte red is roughly about uh, 220 to about 250 bucks, depending on uh, where you look and depending on what sales there are. Now there's another option you can do that a lot of people in the home lab community and data hoarding reddit uh, forum that you look at is you can do shuck, what's called shucking. That's taking an external hard drive like this one here that I just got which is a Western Digital Elements 8 terabyte drive. Now a lot of misconception and from my understanding and experience that I have removing these drives and having to warranty them. I've had to do that twice. I've had no issues whatsoever. I just went ahead and told them, hey, my drive died. I took it out of the external to test, didn't work. Got a new one back, chucked it again. No problem whatsoever, didn't even get any questions asked. Now, a couple things to keep in mind, and I will be going over more information of this when it comes to shucking. A lot of the 8 terabyte uh, elements drives and the, if I remember correctly, the MyBook drives, I believe, are still all white drives. Now, what's the difference between a white and a red terabyte drive, you may ask? Well, a red terabyte drive, like this one here, which is a 4 terabyte drive, is a NAS drive, and the red drives, which are NAS units, are made to be always on. So they're always on, they're always spinning might spin up, may spin down, depending on what uh, enclosure, um, server, JBOD, whatever it is that you may put it in. So it, they're made to run a lot longer. They have a lot more power on hours. So they're made to take a lot more usage. The whites, those, they're about the same. They're a, basically a relabeled red drive. However, one of the things that you will want to keep in mind is they use what's called SML. SMR technology. I'm not going to really go into that, but I will leave a description in the video that you can do more reading on that. But basically, the big difference that you will want to take away between a white and a red, the red drives are a lot faster, and there will be a lot um, more read and write speeds for your array. Uh, the white drives, they are definitely going to be a lot slower. I've seen anywhere from about 40 to 60-ish megabytes a second read compared to on a red to where you can do about 100 to 120, which is basically the limitation of the drive itself. So if that's not a big deal to you, then that's definitely something you can go ahead and look at. Now, another thing that I've also been reading, which I'm going to make it a disclaimer, I'm not sure what's true and what isn't true about this, because I need to do more research myself. But there's definitely a lot of discussions going around that the Western Digital, for one, in the 2 to 6 terabyte range, is um, running SMR drives without actually stating and without disclaiming that they are SMR drives. So it's kind of a sneaky 
scummy tactic. Again, I'm not sure if this is correct or not. I've also read some discussions, I'm not sure exactly how valid they are, that the Seagate drives are also doing that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open this drive up. I'll show you what it is that you get and then we will go over shucking this drive. Now, I have an Unraid server, my backup server that has five or six of these, I do believe. But being the fact that it's my backup server, I don't mind doing that. I, again, when it comes to a large array with a lot of storage, you're usually more concerned with read speeds than write. You're writing to the, to the array once, and then you may read to it when you occasionally need it. So it's going to come with these. It's going to be stashed into here. And then you'll have the box here, which opens up. And that will be the power brick and the USB 3 cord that you will get with it. Now, depending on what file system you are using, if you were going to use this in, like, let's say, Synology or Unraid specifically, like in my case, or anything with XFS or any kind of other file system, some of these I have noticed come in XFAT or XFS. So that will be a problem, especially when in my case I ended up doing troubleshooting for a good 45 minutes. Um, as soon as I added this drive, my array would not post, and it would not pass post. The reason why is it was thinking that this drive, because of the way that Unraid works, that it was thinking it was a boot drive. So it was trying to find an operating system on it, which obviously there is not one. So I recommend uh, taking this, plugging it in before you shuck it, and then format it. And then at that point in time, after you format it, then shuck it, and then you can put it into your array. Otherwise, if you have an external power adapter, you can put that on the drive once it's bare in a docking station and manually format it that way before you throw it into your enclosure. Um, depending on if you get the MyBook or if you get the Elements, I've done both shucking numerous times in both of them. The Elements, I find, are by far much easier to shuck. The MyBooks, they're kind of a pain in the ass and they've definitely made it much more difficult to go ahead and check. So, a couple ways that you can go ahead and do this. Now, going back to my previous conversation in this video, um, depending on your needs, and if you feel comfortable um, destroying the case when you open it, then you don't have to be super careful. Otherwise, if you want to keep the case and possibly use it to put you know, an older drive in that you're upgrading or things of that nature, you can definitely do this a little bit more uh, slow, and then you can be a little bit more careful because what happens when, or like, I believe right here, and here, and here, and here, there's a couple points going around here that there's tabs that you have to basically be super careful on opening, and um, if you're not, you will break those, and then you can definitely do some damage to the external casing if that's something you're worried about. I have, like I said, anywhere from five to eight of these in my closet, so I really don't care. Another stipulation is you want to get a couple credit cards. Don't use something that you're currently using, like your bank card or ATM or something of that nature. Use something you don't care about. I've killed two or three old credit cards that I no longer care about, that I was already going to shred. Again, make sure you use something you don't care about, because I already have snapped a couple of these. So, basically, to get started here, uh, go ahead and find... I usually like to start with a little bit of fingernail. Start on one of the corners. Shove the credit card in there, and then you slowly start working your way around. You probably already heard a couple of those snaps. That's those tabs that it's currently undoing. That way you can get in to the car. In the case itself.
And then there you have it. As you can see, kind of right there and right there, there's those tabs I'm talking about. Those go ahead and lock into a couple of the places going around here that they lock into. There's one of the tabs right there that it locks into. And if you're not too rushing and you take your time, you can actually get these off without snapping these little tabs, which are basically what holds it in place. And then, there you go, white eight terabyte drive. And then these don't have screws, but the MyBook ones will have screws. And then basically at that point in time, all you have to do is work the drive out. Just basically there is a couple, there's four rubber pieces on the corners these guys that basically shove this thing against this case that then goes into the enclosure and that's basically what holds the driving place. And then you'll just have one screw here and then one screw on the side that you'll need to take off in order to get the basically the controller, the little PCB controller that the external uses to pass through the information to the computer. So, unscrew that, unscrew this, and then you can definitely keep these. Make sure that you keep the correct power supply and cord, well the cord really doesn't matter, but the power supply will matter to the correct controller. I have noticed there are some slight differences between the power and the controller board between the my book and the elements. Both of those from everything I've shopped have all been Western Digital white 8 terabyte drives. And that's basically it. So you'll have a nice 8 terabyte drive. Like I said, I will be doing another video on how to upgrade a drive in an unraid system. If you have any questions, give me a shout. Make sure to follow and subscribe and check in the description for my socials. Thanks, guys.